Hi, this is Andrew Vila with uh, Bells of Steel USA. Um, today we're going to talk about our folding rack. It's one of our most popular racks, but it's also the most questioned rack as far as how to assemble it. Uh, I'm going to teach you from walls to studs, all sorts of different things, so there's almost no questions when you get your folding rack. Uh, it can be a little overwhelming on how to put it into your wall. Um, I'm inside of a gym. Uh, this is a commercial space and I have very few drywalled walls. Um, so first thing you're going to need to do is get a stud finder. Um, go ahead and turn it on and what we're going to try to do is find a stud. Um, I am lucky because the studs on my wall are metal so it's going to fall, it's going to be able to find uh, the stud very easy but I'm going to show you how to do it on wood too. So the, the studs inside of this wall are just aluminum. Uh, they are 2 by 4 but they are aluminum. So all you're going to do is put it on the wall. Pull down, move it along, and it'll actually beep when it finds a stud like it did there. And then you can find your next stud, it'll beep as well. So inside of your wall, you're gonna have this, a two by four. Uh, this is a, a block that we use for benching. Um, so we're, what it's actually finding in the stud is the nail, not the stud. So when they uh, nail these together, it's gonna find the nail inside of the stud. So for example, I've got nails that I've screwed in here. It should be able to find um, all of my nails that are inside of here. Okay. Okay. So I actually found a stud on this board. Um, it's just a screw that we put in place. So I just turned it on, held it down, and was able to find that screw. So you're going to have a two by four like this. Once again, it'll have nails in there, and they'll be pretty big. So it'll find the studs a lot easier than these screws that I screwed in pretty deep inside of this. So you just go on the wall. Uh, up and down they put whenever they nail these in they're going to use quite a few nails um, so it shouldn't be that hard to find them they're not going to be super spread apart um, sometimes even in walls you'll find nail pops so if your drywall is shifted at all it'll tell you right where that stud is because it'll have a little nail pop on the end um, you'll hear that studs are 16 on center so i kind of want to explain what that means um, once again this is a commercial space so my studs are not 16 on center but in your house in your home uh, almost all regular buildings are going to be 16 on center and what that means is if my cameraman can zoom in is each stud is going to be 16 inches apart on the center of the stud so if a stud is two inches wide the center of the stud is what it means to be on center so it even tells you on your measuring tape where each stud is so I'm at 16 inches it says stud if my stud is two by four so if it's two inches wide in between that two inches is where that stud will, will be through the middle. You want to try to nail in the middle of the stud. You don't want to hit off to one side or the other. So at 16 inches, I'll have a stud. And then at 32 inches, I'm going to have a stud. And it says it, once again, on your measuring tape. So 16 on center means from the center of one stud to the other. So if I have a stud here, it's going to be 16 inches on center, not to the end of it. So make sure that you know that it's going to be in the center of the stud from the start and at 16 inches. Um, next we're going to show you um, how to hang boards. Um, so let me go grab uh, my board that I'm going to use. Um, I'll think of the word when I come back to it. Do you know what that word is called? At the gym or the showroom in Indianapolis we do not have uh, a wall like this, a drywall that we're going to hang ours on. So um, very thankful for this customer that let us shoot uh, their old bells of steel rack. So this is one of our older models. I will show you our new model. This is an old 3x3, but it is a bells of steel rack. Um, and they hung it up, um, I think it was like six, eight months ago, and it's not had any issues on you know their craftsmanship. So I'm just gonna kind of talk about how I would do it if it were my home gym for a drywall. Uh, the kit that you get is I'm gonna have all these butt, uh, bolts, screws, nuts, all that stuff. It's not gonna have that uh, because you shut up is different versus drywall or masonry. Uh, but I'll show you the, the different things that you need and then we can kind of go into some different details on what, what I would do. Um, and you definitely don't have to do it that my way. All right, so the first thing is, is we gotta get these stringers up. Um, what I would do is go ahead and assemble the rack and then it'll give you the two different heights. Um, a lot of people use a two by six or a two by eight or a two by 10. The reason we use such a big piece of wood is so that there's a lot of room for air. So if you, if you don't have to do an exact measurement, you can know that the squat rack is gonna get sit somewhere on this piece of wood. If you go a two by four, 
uh, you've got to be really precise on where to put that piece. Uh, the other reason we use a two by a two by instead of a one by is we are going to have to uh, put these bolts on the very end. I'll show you on the masonry too on how that works, but you will have to tighten from the back side and put a little um, little gap in there so we can actually tighten. But it has to be flush too. So if it's a one by, that bolt head will stick out too far and and it will actually not be level against the wall. Um, just some basic principles of how drywall works. Um, this is a piece of drywall. You, you're lucky on this piece of drywall that you can see the drywall screws. So you can see them going all the way down. So you're actually on a stud right here. This is a giant piece of wood, a two by four that goes behind this. And this homeowner is lucky because it's not covered up with drywall tape. Um, if it is covered up with drywall tape, like these seams and these screws are covered up, um, you're gonna have to get a stud finder and the stud finder is looking for these screws. So once you turn your stud finder on, uh, you can run it against your wall. There'll be a lot of screws in drywall. It's not just these, there'll be nails, all sorts of different screws and nails in them. Um, and what you're looking for is just try to find that stud. So as you can see, when we actually bolt the two by six or two by eight up, it's gotta be on a stud, otherwise this thing's gonna rip straight out of the drywall. There's not a drywall anchor in the world that will hold this rack up. So you have to go on a stud. Um, trust me from experience. Um, what this homeowner did was they just went to your local home, Home Depot or Lowe's, and we just got some really beefy uh, screws. Um, I'm assuming they're just some big old lag screws. Uh, the bigger the better. Um, put a washer on it. You really want nice and long ones. So you're talking three to four inches because this is a two by and you're drilling into a two by that's sitting this way. So you have six inches to play with, you want to get at least an inch into that drought or into the, uh, the acre. So get all the way through your board and you want a solid inch in the wall as well. Um, so as you can see, you got a top and bottom stringer. Um, I've seen this done several different ways, but the quickest and easiest way is just a stringer on the top, a stringer on the bottom. Literally every time you find a stud, put a bunch of screws in it um, for safety. This might be a little overkill, but I'm, I'm 300 pounds and I've held on top and uh, it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, the other thing is a stud, if you can't find uh, any screws, studs are 16 on center. And what that means is when you get out your measuring tape, from the middle of a stud to the middle of a stud is gonna be 16 inches. And it actually says on your measuring tape, stud on it, it'll be, a, it'll be red instead of black. So that's kind of just the stringer portion. And then next we'll kind of talk about um, this portion and some different rack height stuff real quick. So if you want to cut. Um, the next part I want to talk about is how to actually anchor it um, to these uh, stringers. Uh, I'll show you the different tools when I get back to the, to the gym. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to take this go and go ahead and set it up on the wall how you want. This person traced it so they can kind of see where it's gonna lie. And then what they did was, uh, where the holes are, they went ahead and marked it with a Sharpie and then they drilled through it. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna drill a hole through just big enough for whatever bolt you put in. Once again, these bolts do not come with the kit. So you're gonna have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store. We're not sponsored, I promise. Um, and find bolts that fit through here and get a nice washer on each side. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a drill bit and you're gonna screw out just a little bit of the wood. So that way the head of the bolt is flush and then you can still tighten it from the back with a wrench. And once again, I'll show you all these tools when we get to the gym. It's just a lot easier for me to show you the product on the wall instead of me trying to just fake a bunch of different stringers and stuff at the gym. Um, and once again, this is for drywall. So the setup for the new squat rack is the exact same. So you're still gonna put them sideways. On the new one, there's just one bolt. So you don't only have to use one bolt. Um, and it's a little bit thinner. This is a three by three instead of two by three. The next thing we're gonna talk about is spacing on the floor. Um, so what we'll do is we'll zoom the camera back out and we'll do our final piece inside. And then I'll actually show you how to put together the masonry one um, back at West Indy. So the last part I want to talk about is spacing from the bottom of the rack to the ceiling. Um, this rack has been heavily modified um, due to the shortness of, of the uh, ceiling in here. Not recommended, but at the end of the day, this is going to hold. It's going to do just fine. 
Uh, it's your piece of equipment, so do what you want with it, but if you can use the height, um, this client or customer is, is particularly short, so her needing all the way to the ceiling isn't a thing. Um, I'm 6'5", so if this were my rack, I'd want it to be a little higher for pull-ups. But she's able to do pull-ups and get her head through without hitting the ceiling, so this rack works out perfect for her. Uh, modify it if you need to, um, but not recommended, and it will ruin your warranty. Um, so they did actually modify the bottom to shorten it, so we'll go down to the bottom and kind of show you how this works too. Once again, um, this customer is on the smaller side, so I do not recommend cutting them off the floor. At the gym, we will show you how to measure that and how to have it slide back and forth. This particular homeowner does not put this folding rack against the wall. So it's not a huge deal for it to slide left or right. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered off the floor. She went ahead and just made it short because all she's doing is squatting and pull us with it. And as you can see, it's quite sturdy without that issue or without any issues. Uh, I will show you how to put spacers in this. And if you're doing rubber flooring or if you're having on concrete, We'll show you the variations on how to do that because the gym is concrete. Um, and you'll notice no matter where you are at, whether it's inside a garage or in a basement, the floor will not be level. I can guarantee that. So I'm gonna show you how to put little spacers in there. So that way when you do go ahead and fold it up against the wall, it doesn't scrape the bottom and then you're stuck in one spot. It'll actually float above the floor just a touch. So that way when you get weight on the bar, it'll pull the whole rack down and the rack will actually sit on the ground. Um, once again, this rack is well set up with a bunch of stringers, a bunch of bolts. It's not going anywhere, but I'll show you kind of a different version on how to do it. So next you'll see us in uh, West Indy in the showroom in Indianapolis, and we'll show you how to put this together with the new rack and masonry. And I'll show you some of the drill bits and different things that I would use for the home gym or for a, a drywall wall. So we were just at our home gym and we talked about stringers and how some different components of this folding rack work as far as how to hang it to your drywall wall. The only thing we didn't talk about is the stringers themselves, how you get the bolts in and how that works. So this is not a stringer, obviously. This is a uh, press board for our bench press, but I went and took it from the gym. And I drilled a hole in it for whatever bolts I got from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you went. And then I also got a washer that's just a touch bigger. So the issue is if we just drill a straight hole, we're gonna put our hole through. This is great to attach to the rack, but on the other side, it's not gonna be flush on the wall. It's gonna poke holes in your drywall. It's just not gonna fit flush against the wall. So pretend that this isn't there. Um, you're gonna have to do some pretending in this episode. Uh, go ahead and come on the Magic School Bus with me. Uh, if you get that reference, go ahead and like and comment below. Maybe we can be friends, because I like the Magic School Bus. But I went ahead and got my hole drilled, and whatever side I want to be the drywall side, I'm gonna need to take another drill bit. It's called a wood bit. So this is the bit that I drew, drilled in with just for the bolt. Now I'm gonna take, I call these just straight wood bits, um, and I'm gonna make a little hole in the end of it that goes down, so that way that the washer is hidden. So go ahead and just get the center. Here. And usually these bits are pretty extreme, so be careful because you can drill this thing out way too far really quickly. So now, as you can see on the back, my bolt is pretty much hidden. So we'll zoom in here and I'll just hold it and talk. But as you can see, the bolt head is pretty much hidden. So that way, when it goes and sits on my drywall, if I clean this up and add some sandpaper on there, this will be really, really smooth, and that way it won't ruin your drywall. And on the other side, we can go ahead and tighten the rack to it, and I can still use a head on the other end to keep it tight. So my next thing I'm gonna show you is kind of how this looks with, with your actual rack piece on it. So now that we've got our sunken bolt on the end, that thing's nice and flush. All you're gonna do is you've already preset and pre-marked where these brackets go. You're gonna stick your bracket on, whatever nut came with this, tighten the nut down, and now your bracket stays nice and tight. 
Um, once again, this is some a little bit of imagination, but the next step part of the video, we're really going to show you how to tie it all together. Once again, inside the gym, we all have we just have brick walls, so I can't show you how to do this full setup without ruining a wall in somebody's house. So instead of that, I'm going to kind of show you how to tie it all together. This is how you get all the stringers together. It, it seems like a lot of work, but it's really not that difficult. This would be a two by six or two by eight or two by 10. Draw you around, mark your holes, drill the holes, drill the back out just a touch so that way the bolts are nice and flush. Get everything nice and tight. And then these are all preset and ready to go. Um, another big thing is what we didn't talk about before in the other video is that when you put your stringer up, it's just to get the markings on the board to figure out where to put it. You're still gonna have to take the stringer off to put the brackets on, okay? So don't put your stringers up so tight and so, you know, final final cut that you can't get them off the wall. So put your stringers up, find all the, find all the uh, studs, drill them in, and then after that, take the stringer off, and now you can do this part of the video. All right, so I showed you the stringers showed you the drywall application. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to put this into masonry and how to build it. Um, it doesn't come with a lot of parts because it doesn't take a lot of parts. Um, could you modify this and make the different heights different and all that fun stuff? I'm sure you could, but I'm just gonna follow the directions exactly how they are so that way it's a little bit easier. Um, the cool thing about this is it has an adjustable pull-up bar. So you might be asking yourself, well, how far apart do I put this thing? This is going to go ahead and determine your spacing for you, so it's going to be pretty easy. You don't have to do a lot of guess and check work. Um, it comes with the same bolt, uh, 24, like we use on all of our racks. Um, I have not even really read the directions, but I'm going to go ahead and do this live, and uh, I guarantee you it's pretty darn easy. Um, all the back supports that attach to our wall mounts are all the same size, so you don't, there's not a top and bottom on that, so that makes it pretty darn easy too. Uh, everything's going to take a 24 inch bolt or 24 millimeter bolt with two washers and a nut. It should be that easy. Um, everything else that's going to come with it are these pins so that you can fold it. And it's going to come with these, uh, whatever these are called. It's also going to come with these cotter pins that you're going to put in the ends to make it all tie together so it all stays. Uh, so first things first, make sure the numbers are on the outside. Okay, and they go up, so therefore you know that that is the top and this is the bottom. Uh, the directions state to go ahead and skip a hole for the bottom and then put your uh, bolts in. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick to the directions and I'm gonna stick the bolt. Um, these are decently heavy, so you might want a, a hand to do it with. Unfortunately, I don't have any friends or hands to do this with. So, let's do it as we go. So now in the back, all I'm gonna do is put my washer on the other side, and put one nut in. I went ahead and opened this box and spilled it everywhere, so bear with me. Uh, we're gonna make a giant public service announcement. Leave your bolts like this or slightly tight. Do not over tighten them before the rack is together. I've had a lot of emails and questions on things not aligning. Um, it's not that they're not aligning, it's just that you've over tightened it too much before the whole rack got put together. So just leave everything loose for now, and then we'll tighten it later. So that's one side. We'll go ahead and cut and do the other side, and I'll show you the top. Action. So I went ahead and snug the bottom ones down. Um, the directions say six hole from the top is where the top ones are going to go, and then three holes down is where the bottom goes. Once again, these are all universal, so top and bottom doesn't matter between these two. Um, go ahead and I'm gonna go and snug them down and show you the next part. Action. All right, so now we got the four posts on. Uh, we're gonna take a bolt through the center, but we're attaching to the wall. Uh, this bolt that's gonna go through is gonna go through the back bolt 
on here. And then the front bolt is where this is going to go. So you can take it out and slide the rack back and forth. So it's going to look like this. So you'll have the bolt in, and this will be able to pivot and move so you can fold the rack. Um, one key to this bolt is you don't want to tighten it because if you tighten it too hard, this ain't going to move anymore. So get your bolt in there. Very loosely put it on there and just make sure that it rotates. That's the biggest thing. So let me tighten down. So you tighten down. So really just need a hand tight. So you can still move the rack back and forth. And then what sets it in place is this middle pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four of them. Uh, go ahead and leave it really loose because we're going to have to take it out of the wall anyways if you're doing the stringer method. If you're not using the stringer method, you can go ahead and make these tight. But if it were me and I was doing this on drywall, I would just put this front pin in and that way I can measure everything and then I can take these back off, put them on the stringer, put the stringer back on the wall. But since I'm using concrete, um, I don't need this to come off and on. I can go out and align it without it. I'm just going to level. Um, so I'll go ahead and put these four on nice and loose, and we'll fast forward to the next part. All right, so now that we have it all put together, I went ahead and put it against the wall, and I went ahead and put all of these pins in, all these orange pins, so that way it sits nice and straight. Um, I'm going to give you the biggest key to this whole video, is you're going to have to put some sort of shim at the bottom end. If you just set this against the wall and against the ground, I can guarantee you with 100% that your floor is not going to be level. You're going to have to get a little bit of height off the ground so that way this thing can fold in and fold out. I've never seen a garage or any other space, even this space, is not completely level. So I went ahead and just put some tile from the bathroom that I was remodeling a bathroom with. Put some tile in. It's going to give me a little bit of space off the ground to work. And then I went ahead and set the rack in place all against the wall. And then all I did was level it. So all I did was take my magnet level. And all I did was tap and touch these different uh, uprights to make sure that it comes nice and level and square. I'm going to check side and back to make sure the front, so it's square this way, then square this way. That way there's full contact on the wall. If you're doing this in masonry and if you're doing this with stringers, as soon as you put that bolt in, this thing's going to be pretty darn sturdy. Um, level or not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold up just fine. But get as level as you can beforehand mark everything and then we're going to drill all those holes. If you're using stringers, this is the perfect time to figure out where your stringer height is. So if I was using stringers, I would understand that this is where the middle of my stringer should be and if I'm using a 2x6 or 2x8 or whatnot, that I can mark on the wall that says, hey, this height is where my stringer is going to go and that height is where the bottom stringer is going to go. Uh, I don't need it because I'm going into mason. I'm going to use Tapcons. It's one of the strongest concrete bits or concrete screws you can find. They work for literally anything. Everything in the gym that is held up by, by any sort of dry, or drywall or a masonry bit is going to be a Tapcon. Um, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. They work extremely well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I got everything nice and level. I'm going to go ahead and just mark my holes. So even if I get called in to work or I got another task I need to do, I'm just going to mark these holes so that way if I need to come back or I need to set the rack to the side, I can come back and just drill these holes no problem. These are the holes in the different drawings you'd be putting on your stringers if you were using them. Alright, so now I have everything marked, I'm going to go get the tapcons that are the correct size for these holes and I'll show you how to drill them into concrete. Um, my recommendation is get at least two concrete drill bits um, and a really nice drill. Um, I've been doing this for five plus years, I'm drilling stuff into concrete. Drill bits go really fast and if it's a really cheap drill, it's going to take a long time to go through concrete. Um, so spend the extra money on a nice drill, get a couple drill bits and it'll go right through no problem. So I'll show you that next. Thank okay. So I got my drill, my drill bits, and my tap cons. Um, I went ahead, I use these ones. Um, it's a 15 millimeter. Uh, whatever box you get for, uh, for 
uh, masonry, it'll actually tell you what bit to get. Go ahead and get the most expensive, nice one you can get. Otherwise, it'll go through a bunch. And then another thing I would do is I'd write a, a letter to your husband or wife, your son and daughter and your neighbor saying that I'm sorry for the noise. Uh, this is extremely noisy. Um, this will irritate just about anybody in the room. Uh, this is a really high tech, high speed um, drill. I'm gonna put it on the highest setting. I'm gonna try to get these done really quick so I don't make everybody mad. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and get them done as fast as you can. Another thing is if it's masonry, make sure it's nice and level. If you're off at all, um, that bit is, is just gonna eat through the wall and it's, it's not gonna work. So you gotta be really straight, really level. And you, and you gotta kind of have a steady hand. Uh, we've got eight to do, so I'll just knock these out and then we'll kind of show you how to put together from there. Action. So now that we got everything drilled, went ahead and lined it up. Uh, put your concrete bit in, but put it in kind of loose so that way we can uh, raise the uh, foot off the ground so that way the shim actually worked. If you just leave it sit on the ground and tighten it, you're right back where you were. So either leave the shim in, which I'll probably end up doing. But I'm gonna go ahead and just get it in there nice and loose. I still have room to wiggle and play with it if I need to. But then I'll go ahead and put those shims back in. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom, I'll get everything kind of loose. So I've got my shims in still. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything nice and tight, tight. The tricky part is getting these shims out, so you have to be kind of forceful. Once you have them out, you'll notice you have just enough space to open and close. So, can you, can you see this? So, as you notice, my concrete is not as level or not the same height as over here. So, it's really smooth until we get to here to the sticking point. So, once again, we got to put those shims in to make sure that it will fold. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck the whole way. Uh, this is your belt and steel folding area. Uh, it's super nice if you got a home gym. Uh, it's extremely hard to put together. Uh, if you got a friend, I recommend bringing them with you. Um, this is the way that I would fold it together. Then you can take your, uh, your cross support piece and hang it up here. Um, it's all in the directions of the sort of picture of that. So, if you go to your last page of your directions, it'll show you. You take your J hooks, you put your J hooks in here, and it'll actually hold your bar for you. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and email me support at bellsandsteel.us. Uh, I'm your main contact for that. Um, We'll come out with a couple other videos on some different exercises you can do with it. Once again, this is your bonus steel folding room. Um, thank you so much. I know it's a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it.